Well, hi, this is John Monte at Pixum, and I'm going to review the camera setup menu for a Seawolf camera. And uh, you'll see I have a little uh, reference camera here um, plugged into my monitor, and it has a Seawolf chip inside. It's got five buttons on the back, and what I'm going to do here is push the center button for a second or two, and it'll bring up the camera setup menu. And you can see there's about uh, 10 or so items on here, and I'm going to review those with you to let you know what the key uh, adjustments are to set up the camera. Now the first one is the WDR control menu and you see it's defaulted to medium. That is a, uh, it's a, it's a wide dynamic range mode but it's not the absolute maximum that the Seawolf can do. If you want the maximum you can always put this on high and what that will give you is a full 17 bits of dynamic range which is uh, also about 120 decibels of dynamic range. That's more dynamic range, more contrast that the human, than the human eye can see. So it's a tremendous amount of dynamic range if you set that on high. If you want uh, good dynamic range but a little less, you can set it to medium. That'll scroll it back about an f-stop so it'll be about you know, an f-stop or two. It might be uh, over 100 dB dynamic range still. Um, still a very wide dynamic range on medium. Uh, normal brings it back even further to, um, you know, 90, 95 dB of dynamic range, more like a 14-bit type camera. And then finally, low brings it to as low as the camera goes. It's more like uh, a, a non-dynamic range camera at that time. It has uh, maybe uh, 75 dB of dynamic range. So that's the WDR control. Uh, the next item is the BLC backlight compensation. BLC is used for heavily backlit scenes, like in a building lobby with glass doors, and you want to see someone's face as they come uh, in through on a sunny day. Um, you can turn BLC on, and what that will do is the exposure control of the camera will adjust so that it focuses more on the, uh, the, the darker, more shadowed parts of the image. Um, so that's where uh, you know, you'll get the, the best information. So if you've just got to get shadow detail, Put the BLC on, make sure you save the change after you change that setting. The next uh, menu item here is the white balance. There's, uh, there's a default mode of ATW. ATW is auto tracking white balance. And uh, that's a mode which it, it has a meter for the color temperature. 24 hours a day, day, night, morning, afternoon, whatever, it's going to continue to monitor the color temperature of the scene and it will adjust the camera's color for that temperature. So it'll do white balance automatically. 95% of cameras are fine just setting ATW. Now, if you've got a scene that you absolutely have to have the perfect white balance and you don't think the ATW mode is close enough, you can always adjust this to the AWB mode. AWB is the same as push to set white balance. What that means is that you have to get something white, like a piece of paper, or a piece of cardboard and put it in front of the camera so that it's, uh, it's a good part of the scene. Not all the scene, but just a good part of the scene, like a quarter of the, a quarter of the image would be this white piece of paper or cardboard. When you have that set up, you want to press the center button. That's why there's a little arrow here. That means that once you have the white, reference white in the scene, you press the center button and the AWB is going to adjust to the correct white balance. Okay? That is really only used when you have a scene that 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, it's never going to change. Um, casinos are a good example of that. You have a gaming table, it's common to use AWB in a casino because the gaming lighting will never change. It'll never get dark, it'll never get bright, it'll always be the same. Another good example is a restaurant application where um, you want a color image that is fixed lighting and uh, you know, it's never going to change uh, whenever the camera is on. So that's the white balance function. Um, the next one is the AGC, which is the automatic gain control. That's the amount of gain, digital gain, that the camera um, uses when the scene gets dark. Um, there's a normal setting, there's a low setting, and there's a high setting. So you've got three choices. Basically, um, for the high setting, you're going to have more slow shutter, more 3D NR, 3D noise reduction, more noise cancellation modes, and it's going to just crank the gain up uh, pretty high, like as, like as high as uh, 30 dB gain, which is a lot of gain. Um, normally, uh, uh, users are, are very satisfied just leaving this in normal, and you can do that. If you want uh, prettier pictures in the dark with less noise, you can set this to low. It's not going to gain up so much. You're going to lose detail in the shadows, 
especially at night. However, it's going to be a less noisy image. So the higher you set the AGC, the more information you're going to get, but also the more visible noise you're going to get in the scene when it's very dark. Um, the next item is the lens select. You can see uh, this is selected. Uh, there's a DC iris. It also has a manual adjustment, so you can go between manual or DC iris, depending upon which kind of lens is on. A lot of times, dome cameras, dome cameras, they'll all have a DC iris, and you'll never have to change it. A lot of Seawolf cameras that are microdomes, very small, will have a manual iris, um, and you'll never have to adjust it because it'll be adjusted that way in the factory for you. Um, the next uh, menu is uh, fluorescent modes, and there's quite a few on a Seawolf camera. There's, uh, there's, uh, there's a lot of engineering effort that's gone into perfecting various fluorescent modes. Um, this happens when the light source is pulsating, like fluorescent lights do, whether they're compact fluorescent, um, mercury vapor lights do this, as well as some uh, modulated uh, LED lights. They blink very quickly. You can't see them with your eye, but the camera can see them, and so that modulates the power of the, uh, the light source. The fluorescent modes will help to reduce color rolling and pulsing that happens there. Now, there's a few modes. One of them is called EFR, Enhanced Flicker Reduction. Um, it's a very useful mode for uh, when you, you want to try to reduce color rolling artifacts from the pulsating lights, but you still want um, more dynamic range than a standard camera. So the EFR requires a DC iris lens and it gives you pretty good dynamic range. Not the most dynamic that you know a Seawolf uh, can do when the fluorescent mode is off, but still pretty good dynamic range. Um, the next mode is called CRR2, Color Roll Reduction. Color Roll Reduction 2. Um, that's a mode that requires a DC iris lens and it reduces the dynamic range more, but it also can combat even worse color roll. And then finally, there's the CRR mode. The CRR mode works with either manual lenses or DC iris lenses and cuts the dynamic range even further, but it can combat you know, really bad cases of color roll. So there's, there's a few choices there. I'll just turn that to off. Um, the next one is uh, day-night control, which uh, the, it, basically it's either an auto or off. Auto means that when the scene gets dark, like at nighttime, the camera is going to start adjusting its properties to um, reduce the noise in the scene. So it's going to add like a digital slow shutter mode. Um, and it's going to add um, uh, 3D NR, 3D noise reduction. That's a time-based noise reduction function that we have on the Seawolf chip. Um, if you set it to off, the camera is going to be colored day and night, no matter how dark it is, no matter how bright it is. So both both the auto and the off modes on the day-night control perform the same during the day. Um, beautiful color, that great pixel wide dynamic range, that's going to be unchanged. But at nighttime, auto is going to go into slow shutter, 3D and R, and even turn black and white, reduce the color saturation all the way till you can't really see it. It'll look like a grayscale image in a very, very dark scene. So if you don't want the camera turned to black and white when it's very dark, then you should turn this off. And that way it'll stay color 24 hours a day. Um, there's a sync menu. Uh, there's two options with sync. One is internal sync, which is what DC powered cameras use. Um, and the other one is um, line lock. And you can see that next to where it says line lock, there's a couple of dots next to it. That means there's a menu behind this menu. And if I push the enter button, the center button again, it's going to bring up the new menu, which is the line lock vertical phase menu. Now, Putting a camera on line lock will only have an effect if it's an AC powered camera. So it has to be like, for example, a 24 volt AC camera. If that's the case, then you can stop rolling from fluorescent lights or other modulated lights just by turning on line lock and it'll stop the roll. The thing is, it might catch in a phase that, in a vertical phase that still produces an unwanted color, like whites maybe too orange. The way you get rid of that is by pushing the left or right buttons, you can scroll to different phases, and that will eventually turn white to white. Once you've found the correct phase, you can return back to the main menu and then save before you exit. And that brings me to the last three at the bottom here, last three options on the setup menu. Um, Seawolf is a great camera. You can adjust many properties, but you've got to save them before you exit, and that's why save and exit is always very important. I'll hit that. You see the menu flash once there. 
that means it's saved and the menu goes off. So now you know if the power were ever to accidentally go off to the camera, like there's a blackout or something, or there's a power spike, the camera resets itself, it'll come back into the mode that you just set it up for. It's critical that you hit save before exiting, because if you don't and the camera loses power, it's going to forget all the changes you made when you change those properties. Okay. Um, there's two other options at the bottom here. One of them is the cancel. That means um, if you made changes and you did not want to save them, just cancel them, the camera will get out. And the second one is default. That means if you want to go all the way back to how the factory shipped the camera, you can hit default, and anything you, you save, changes that you made, like even a year ago or a week ago or an hour ago, all those will be uh, cleaned up and it'll go back to the factory default settings. And uh, so that's the review of the Seawolf uh, camera setup menu. Thanks for listening.